Hi everyone, how you doing? Good. Had a big lunch. Yeah, I kind of have a food coma as well. Um, so I haven't been out doing speaking events for a while. Uh, just been out here in San Francisco building out a team. So I was like super excited to come out here to talk to you guys. Um, that I, I forgot to even like put mousse on my hair, <laughs> just like running out. So <laughs> very excited to be here. Um, just to give you, tell you a little bit about me. Uh, so as you guys know, I'm the, one of the co-founders of the Icon Foundation. Icon is one of the largest projects in the world. We are the largest project probably out, out of Korea, doing some very, very exciting things there. So if you want to learn more about what we do, uh, please check out our website. We have some very interesting applications that are now being built on top of Icon, such as CryptoMecca and Zensport over there. Like Blue Whale was the, was the first ICO that actually uh, went on top of I Icon. I also wear another hat. Uh, I am the chief strategy officer for the largest fintech company in South Korea called Daily Financial Group. We do two things within the blockchain space. We have the number one enterprise blockchain company called The Loop and where we work with companies like SBI Ripple Asia from Japan. We work very closely with the financial securities firms and banks. Um, so we do a lot of exciting things in the private blockchain space as well. Uh, and also we own a, a cryptocurrency exchange called Coin One, and I believe Kevin Cha will be coming out here uh, talking about his company right after, my, uh, right after me. Um, I also do a little bit of uh, venture angel investing. Uh, I, and also I started my career as a technology investment banker doing IPOs, M&As, a lot of the things that Wall Street does. So I sort of have experience working with the old world finance and also the new world finance. So my topic today is blockchain. What is the missing piece? I actually didn't come up with this topic, but it's a very, very interesting topic. Our friends at um, Norris, uh, previously known as Cryptocurrency, uh, actually picked this topic for me because we had a lot of discussion about like how to really push this space forward and what is that missing piece. And without even me knowing, they picked out this, uh, this uh, topic for me. So I'm going to do my best to come up with an answer, which uh, I hope is going to be an interesting topic for today. So when you talk about what is the missing piece, and I actually ask this question to some of my friends in the blockchain space, uh, people talk about talent shortage, especially in the development, developer side of things. We don't have enough developers, software developers in the blockchain space, and that is okay. And we are doing our best to train uh, a lot of the talent that is, that is out there. But, um, you know, talent shortage is one of them. And also, not only about the software development side, but also uh, just the business side as well. I mean, I've ran many companies in my life, and I have to say Icon is one of the toughest and the most challenging uh, companies or projects that I had to work on because it sort of takes unique skill sets. You have to put together like marketing, business development. You also have to know about financial capital markets. You got, you got to do all that money that you raise. You got to know how to do asset management. So there's not a lot of startups or a lot of companies that has to deal with a lot of these aspects of running, operating a company. So you are sort of running a startup at the same time, you have responsibilities of a Fortune 500 company. So it's, it's very, very interesting. So we don't have enough talent in that res regards. But one good thing I have to say, one promising thing is that a lot of the money that we raise is actually being funneled into grooming the future talents of tomorrow. So I think that is one interesting and really exciting thing that uh, I want to mention today because, uh, you know, I think this industry is criticized a lot for the money that we're raising. But actually, a lot of this money that we're raising is actually getting going back into uh, investing into the future of the future talent that will be uh, educated and will, will learn to run companies like Icon and things like that. 
Uh, the other question is that what if I ask, like, what is the missing piece? A lot of people say uh, user adoption, especially on the investor side. Uh, the investors are always asking, like, okay, the, what's the first use case? Is there a real use case? And I would say if you look at the, the graph over there, which was provided by Accenture Research, um, you know, Today, if you look at 2018, we are supposed to be in the growth phase, but I, I have to argue, we are actually probably in the tail end of 2017, like where is this uh, early adoption. So we're still looking for more early adoption, more use cases, more experiments, um, and we need to do a lot to actually get to the growth phase. So I would say we are still working on the adoption side of things. But user adoption is a big, big challenge that is right in front of us. I would like to kind of combine the both and just generally say that what we want to do is the big missing piece in this space right now is education. So every person that I talk to that asks me like, okay, what, is, what, what do we need, to, what are you guys doing? Like, what is ICON doing? We always say we work on a lot of education. And the, I think a lot of people actually confuse, the big problem is that a lot of people actually confuse education with marketing. Like, we get tweeted a lot saying, oh, you guys don't do enough marketing. You guys need to go out there and talk about your, your, what you guys do, like how much, you know, your vision and everything. And, um, I think a lot of people actually confuse education with marketing because I think this, this is where the, the problem with um, overselling, overpromising your technology and your product comes in. And the other side is that you're, you are always building something that is not needed in the market. So the difference between education and marketing, I don't know if you guys see, uh, know some of the companies there, but I just wanted to put it out there as an example. It's not easy to come up with, um, with products or with technologies that people need. And it's not easy to, to deliver on the promises because you feel sometimes that you could create something that is magnificent, but at the same time you realize while you're building it that, oh my gosh, this is way too hard. So it's not easy always coming up with that exact, exact point, but um, we always have to learn how to uh, deal with that. The part about education is that I believe education is something like a conversation. You learn while you're teaching someone to do something, or the opposite, where you actually uh, teach to actually learn. So a lot of people ask, what is the secret sauce uh, for ICON? Like, what do you guys do that made ICON to what it is today? And our answer is, like, we go out there and we actually teach a lot of companies and people about what we do, and in return, we get the feedback and we actually learn a lot about, okay, this is what we need to do in, it, in order to get us to the next level. And I would like to give you an example. So when I first learned about the blockchain technology, I Googled, what is blockchain technology? And I remember one of the first things that actually analogies that I think was Nick Sabos was comparing it to was vending machine. And the vending machine uh, analogy really worked for me. And I wanted to get it out there and make it work. So I said, fuck it, let's build our own vending machine. <laughs> and we actually built a vending machine and we put it into universities, not because we thought it was gonna be any like, extremely useful, but because we wanted to get the word out there saying, hey, let's have a conversation about what the blockchain can provide. I want you to give us feedback about what this blockchain vending machines can do or cannot do, why is it useful or not. You know, and we got a lot of good and bad feedbacks. Uh, if you look at over there, the uh, image on the left-hand side was actually a, a live news uh, reporter that came and visited the university campus to actually showcase a blockchain vending machine. And things like that, I think, is really cool, really gets the word out there, you know, explaining what blockchain technology is and comparing it to a vending machine. So 
you know, we did not imagine a simple vending machines to do too much. We really wanted to just get a feedback from uh, some of the students, but we, it became a bigger issue, and, um, you know, which, which was very fortunate because a lot more people can actually learn about the blockchain technology itself. The other thing that resulted in that vending machine is that a lot of the students actually came up to us and wanted to work on projects with us. So the next project that we're evolving from a vending machine is what we call blockchain campus project, and where we'll be working with multiple universities that we already have partnership with across Korea. Another example is, you see here, it's a picture of financial securities executives in South Korea. So about two years ago, we grouped together some uh, financial executives. We told them, hey, there's, this, some, there's something called blockchain technology that we think you should learn about. Um, you know, if you, we know that you guys are very interested. It's one of the hot words that, that are out there, but you know, we're the experts in the space. Come in here, come to our office, and we'll hold a seminar. And we actually had a few dozen executives and managers from various financial institutions pay about $1,000 per person just to come listen about what blockchain is, or what blockchain was. And what was really cool that came out of this seminar was a, we actually launched a consortium. And that consortium was sort of the root of how everything got started. Um, so in Korea, we have a live version of our enterprise blockchain uh, product called Chain ID. And before, if you wanted to open a brokerage account, you had to walk into a physical branch and you have to sign a bunch of papers. And if you wanted to open another brokerage account, you had to go through the same exact process over again, which was redundant and painful. However, after this seminar and after we decided to launch the, the consortium, we actually created this product called Chain ID, and we've made that into a seamless process. So if you created a brokerage account once, you don't ever have to create that brokerage account again by walking into another branch. So it's a very, very seamless process now that you have an option for. The third example is, uh, is still ongoing. Uh, and of, of course, we have many, many seminars that's uh, actually live today that we're holding. Uh, I actually go out to events like this and try to talk to people about like, things that we do. But yeah, this one it was very interesting where we work with SBI Ripple Asia and they invited us to, to fly to Japan and to talk about our experiences in the blockchain space and how blockchain could help the credit card industry. So the same exact process. What we do is we go out there, we do not offer we do not try to sell a product that we don't know if it's going to benefit the industry. We don't go out there, market our product, our technology. We actually go in there, talk to some of the key decision makers. We teach them about here are the capabilities of blockchain, and we actually work backwards. We learn what they need, how they want to solve the problem that they have with a blockchain technology, and we work together to build projects, to build consortiums, and to try to implement blockchain in the real world. So through education, I would like to say that we learn and we teach. Uh, we position ourselves for long-term growth. That's what ICON has been doing. That's what kind of makes us a little bit different than a lot of the projects out there. We're not trying to sell a product. We're not trying to sell our technology. We're out there trying to educate the public about the blockchain technology. We're trying to go out there and educate the enterprise about the blockchain technology. I'm here trying to talk to you about the things that we do so that I'm hoping that you guys will go out there and uh, tell your friends, tell your family members about what you learned, how blockchain could be applied in various scenarios and just to get the conversation going because we need, in the future, we hope that this educational seminars and speeches will, will increase adoption in the space. So today, just through the same method, 
we've been able to um, you know, lead consortiums in various industries, and it's not just securities. Uh, we also do insurance, we work with banks, we work with hospitals, supply chain management companies, and so forth. And how this kind of education aspect or strategy, I would say, how does it work for us? How did it work for us? I mean, just about six months ago, um, in December, um, it was about six months ago, in December, end of December, uh, this is a diagram that was created by one of our community members. So this has, is a very, you know, it's a diagram with all the logos that shows our network. And just within six months, we've been able to increase our network size by, I would say, at least threefold. And that's all because of the, the, world, the word is spreading. We believe we go out there, we talk to people about the benefits of technology, and it all comes back to us. And a lot of people want to start projects with us. And uh, I think that has been leading to very, very positive things in the blockchain space. So I would like to leave you with uh, one thing, is that you guys all came here to learn about the blockchain technology. But you know, you guys might be afraid that, hey, I'm not an expert in this space. But the truth of the matter is that there are no blockchain experts right now. I've only been learning about blockchain for the past year and a half. So I'm very new to this space as well. I'm still learning. I'm still going out there and experimenting and exploring. So I would like to encourage everyone in here to go out there, talk about what you've learned, go start conversations. If you are a blockchain company, don't try to sell your product to your uh, enterprises or to another people. Try to start conversations and try to learn about what they need. And I promise you, all that, uh, all that effort will eventually return back to uh, new type of partnerships and new type of projects. Thank you very much.